Hey everyone, Georgie here from Procreate. Thank you so much for joining us today for our very special Procreate 5.2 preview live stream for Lightbox Expo. I'm joined in the couches today by James, our CEO, and Claire, our COO. And they're going to be walking through the uh, preview build of Procreate 5.2, showing you some of the features and telling you a little bit about um, our thought process behind it, how we did it, all that sort of stuff. If you have any questions, please let us know in the chat. We have a team behind the scenes here. You can't see them, but they're all working really hard. They're going to be talking to you in the chat, fielding any questions and sending them through to us on the screen here to answer. So thanks for joining us today, guys. Awesome to be on the stream with you. Very exciting to see 5.2. Yeah, it's good to be here. Lots of work we've been putting into 5.2, so it's mm. nice to finally Finally uh, show, show something. something. Yeah. yeah. It's going to yeah. be super fun. It's been a while. So a little something that you guys might not know. Each Procreate release actually has a bit of a theme behind it. So I wanted to start today by asking about our themes. Where do we kind of where do we kind of look at with each release recently? What well, it helps themes to been? it helps to make decisions about what's in and what's out because we could do any feature under the sun. Mm. But for example, the last release five five X um, was really just trying to make um, people get a bit more joy in their lives. Some just fun features like um, being able to grab a color palette from any image or from the camera that we've introduced oh, so a, cool. <laughs> a whole lot of fun like filters like glitch and half tone and uh, that really help you just you know add some spice to the end of your artwork which is mm. fun and then we had our face paint which was mm. a bit of a joyful just thing that to um you know try playing with ar and have a yeah, yeah. for sure a really a kind of unsung hero, I guess, of that release, really, face paint. It was so much fun to use, but also became a really useful tool for our professionals in concept and character design because they started using it as a face reference tool, which was awesome. Really cool. One of those really cool, fun features, yeah. too. I remember when, when uh, Claire had a, a very, very early version. I think we were in, um, we were in lockdown at that time, mm. and uh, I had the kids around, and so I was testing one of the, the models and my daughter came up and she was just smitten by the fact that like, she was like, what the hell, my face is, what? And she just couldn't leave the iPad. It was a really nice moment to go, that's, you know, that's just a lot of fun. You can yeah. see the kids are having fun. And even as an adult, I wasted way too much time. <laughs> I made like, like this whole makeup mask. I looked beautiful. It was I amazing. remember that one actually. Yeah, you remember? <laughs> but I had like stitched like mouth and I loved it. It was a lot of fun. It was nice fun. to just, have, even around the office desk, see people giggling, yeah. Yeah. Right, just making silly things. And then yeah. to have it be used in Olivia Rodrigo's film clip. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Nice, that was lovely. Know, cherry on the top. Yeah, yeah that was very, really very nice. cool. Yeah, a good, a good use case for, for how it can be used outside of just the fun stuff, mm. the, the commercial side of it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And Procreate 5, James, what about that one? It was a big release. That was a really, really big release. But the theme for 5 was more centred around um, the brushes. You know, we put so much effort into the brush mm. engine. It's the first time we built Brush Studio. Uh, we accepted ABRs and that brought a whole host of new like settings and stuff. Yeah. Um, 5 was a ginormous release, but the, the real focus, like every release we do, there's a focus on one particular feature, but there's sort of, sort of surrounding, uh, surrounding supporting features, and definitely five was all about the brushes. You know, mm. such a big jump. If you go back to, like Procreate four, and then you jump to five, it's almost like a different app. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Completely changed. Yeah. So you said just then that usually our releases are focused around one main thing, and then a lot of extra things around it. So I think. Probably one of the main things of 5.2 that everyone is really excited about is 3D, of course. So when we're looking at 3D in 5.2, um, there's a couple other things as well. So what's the theme for this release? Um, art is for everyone. So that encompasses some stuff like we've got a bunch of different languages. We've got Hindi, Polish and Thai, um, as well as looking at um, supporting some uh, artists with um, of, of differing abilities, particularly um, with vision, um, mobility and cognitive issues. So mm. that helped to guide the different features that we could have added into there. Yeah, definitely. And 3D, would you like to? It's just so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it is. I just lose so much time every time. We've got some amazing commission artists, mm. right, who are working yeah, with us and they're giving sure. these models. All I can do is turn them into bronze little ornaments, but 
Uh, but it's just so much fun to just sit there and play. It's a, it's kind of, you know, we spend so much time on the two-dimensional canvas and what we can do with that two-dimensional canvas. What I love about 5.2 is that we're kind of taking that same kind of essence of what we're about mm. and taking it to a whole new type of canvas. Mm. So when you're drawing on a 3D model, like it just feels like you're, you're drawing on a two-dimensional surface, but you've just got, you know, this this level of in, of intuitiveness. Yeah. That is just, and we spent a long time on the gestures. I think it's one of the, one, mm. it's been one of the points that we've really spent time, like how should you interact with a 3D model with multi-touch mm. and, you know, stuff like selecting parts of the mesh, moving the mesh around, zooming and panning. I think a lot of time has been spent on that. Also the engine, lol. There's been a lot of work <laughs> on the engine because, you know, we were lucky that Procreate was, uh, has been always developed as a, as a graphically accelerated app. So we've been sitting on top of, of metal for a long mm. time. So we didn't have to redo the entire engine, but we kind of had to redo the entire engine, you know? Yeah, yeah. for sure, for and sure. So, and it means that, you know, people who didn't think of themselves as 3D artists, yeah. have a try, have a go. It's yeah. A, yeah, yeah, absolutely, totally. absolutely. It kind of opens up to a whole new realm for a lot of people, which will be really exciting. You can see it on the screen now, guys, of course, James painting on our roller skate model that we have. Yeah, Stinson. painting is a strong word, but painting. I love, you know what, I love, I love these metallic brushes. Mm. These metallic brushes are my favorite. So you can see as I'm laying down some, uh, some yellow, we're getting some of the environment kind of being reflected off that. I just love how everything can be shiny. And to do that, <laughs> like we, we've, we've made a very deliberate choice that you don't go and sort of pick a color that is metallic or is glossy or mm. whatever. Again, with Procreate, everything's about the brushes. So we put it inside the brush studio. We've got this new material section here where you can adjust the value of how metallic. You can see here, if I make some mark on our 3D guy there, you can see here I've got uh, non-metallic there, but I can push it all the way up to get that lovely kind of reflective. And I've got glossiness here. And I can even replace this uh, source with any kind of texture I want. Today I'm keeping it pretty clean because I'm just noodling away here on this guy. But it's mm. a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's a bit like five. Like the, diff the feeling of the brushes changes a lot when you go back to five X too. So yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Why, is, why isn't it shiny? <laughs> <laughs> why can't everything be shiny now? I want everything shiny. Glare for everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the new update um, does it? Is it only for the M1 iPads? No, no. That 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 much we can say for sure. We're still doing mm -hmm. some last tests about um, with all the different iPads that are available um, to, to like supported by um, yeah. the current iOS, yeah. but we're very hopeful that it will be for all of them. I mean, yeah. With the artists for everyone, we're trying our best to make it as accessible as possible. And as Claire's mentioned, we're trying our best. It looks, there's yep. some early tests on the, on the little iPad mini, which looks amazing. You've got these beautiful <laughs> models, but there is still a lot of testing to do before it, we can it get there. It looks very promising though. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. No, that's yeah. super cool. So tell us a bit about the models there, Claire. Um, how are they structured? What file formats can we import, export, all of that sort of stuff? So at the moment we're focusing on um, USDZ and OBJ, um, but we'll be looking into other ones um, over time. Mm -hmm. uh, if James wants to open up the layers panel, mm. we can have a look a bit. So this um, model is, has a few different texture set sets that will share layers between them. Um, and there's multiple meshes within that. So do you have one that you can um, select parts of the mesh and then, part, and then double tap for the whole texture set? Yeah, this whole thing's really nice. Like, so everything is divided up. So if I want it, we talked a little bit about gestures. If I tap once, it'll select only part of that mesh. So at that point, it's just selected the laces mesh. And you can see here, we've got that shared texture set. So it is drawing on that shared texture mm. set. But that, that part of the UX is also really nice. I can just tap to select an area where I want to draw. I can, you know, select a little guy here and it isolates that too, which is really, mm. really nice. And you can double tap if you just want to like blat, blat over the entire texture set. Yeah. Um, and also if you want to open the, um, some of the materials. Oh yeah, mm. good call. And I'll open this guy here. Yeah. You can see we've got the color roughness and metallic. Yeah, so that means if you actually tap on one of those materials, you can go in and, and bump up the metallics or, or turn it down if you got too shiny. Yeah, cool. Um, replace all of the metallics. 
I don't know if there is a thing that's too shiny. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, can you get too shiny? I don't think so. I'm trying to figure out how we can make it more glittery. I'm like using jewel Ooh. brushes with like sparkly mm. things and stuff. I'm <laughs> that's all about... definitely a goal. Uh, yeah. Yep, I'm all about that. Amazing. I can feel a Procreate tutorial coming we on. We can there. do it with noise. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. yeah. And maybe like do a jewel brush with one of the glitter brushes and massive amounts of spacing. Mm. Could work. Nice. Could nice. Work. <laughs> so do these models require UVs? Yes. Yeah, I mean, we're dealing with a format, you know, that is very mature. It's been around a long time. And so we need to kind of work within the constraints of what that means, you know, for the industry. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Just enjoying watching James paint his flames on the little know, screen that we've painting, got here as it's well. It's more like graffitiing for Graffitiing me. his yeah. streams. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. It is. The, and there's, you know, there's a lot we, we, you know, we probably can't cover today because there's not enough time, but it's a... Even though we're focusing on 3D, there's a lot in the uh, in the in this new update that we're bringing. Yeah, but look at that! Definitely. I love when you paint and you get that lovely kind of you know the environment bleeding through. It's just so cool. You can also change. Although we're a bit early for that, we've got to we want to show you guys some of the lighting studio stuff. We worked really hard hard on that, but um, mm. we'll get to that a bit later. Yeah, we'll take a look at that yeah. in a little bit. Um, while we're still on UVs, can you export the UVs and textures? You can export, there's a range of different exports. We can export the OBJ with the, with the textures, um, you can, or the full USDZ, or you can just export all of the um, textures as PNGs. There's, mm. um, there's also, we've got some animated exports, which are pretty cool. But yeah. yeah, we'll have to have a look at those as well at the end when Good idea. James has finished graffiti yeah. his yes, flames. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's fantastic. So we can paint in 3D in 5.2, can we sculpt? No. <laughs> <laughs> we've, actually been asked, we've actually been asked that uh, a lot. And yeah, whilst it would be lovely to uh, sculpt and model in Procreate, right now we're just focusing mm -hmm. on it as a canvas. Um, and there's still so much to do with that, like just to try and make a beautiful Procreate experience on a three-dimensional model. I think we were a little ambitious when we first started this. When did we start at the beginning of the year? I think so. Yeah. Uh, it's been a long journey yeah. <laughs> uh, where we started that. We thought, oh, it'll be done, you know, a couple of months or whatever. Like, nope, we're still going. Lots of polish that we need to, to put in there before, yeah. it's, before it's done, you know. Yeah, and definitely. Sculpting would be a whole different journey. Yep. Yeah, <clears throat> a really, really big journey. I think it's important to remember, guys, that at its heart, Procreate is still a painting app, mm. illustration app. So, um, yeah, this one will just be 3D painting. But happy that you're excited and thinking ahead, that sort of stuff. Mm. <laughs> so what materials are supported in the update and are they editable? So the editable ones are um, roughness and metallics. Mm -hmm. um, there's also, um, I'm trying to think, there's the, I think it's the ambient occlusion. I think so, it's yeah. It's still supported, but not. I don't um, think we're painting editable. Like Not editable. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. I believe there's another one, but I have to get back to you on that one. I don't want to get that <laughs> wrong. Well, this is the thing. There's so much in 5.2. Claire and I were struggling beforehand going, uh, it, yeah, it's there's a lot. It's normals, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Normal yeah. maps. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm. Fantastic. This is so glittery. Look, My goodness. If I could make it more glittery, I would. But <laughs> this is all I got. You know, this is what I have to work with. And check out that amazing texture as well coming through the metallics there. Yeah. That's, that's you know, incredible. You, you know, I think the, uh, the artists uh, working with our marketing team really did a great job just really pumping up the texture values. These are 4K textures, so you can see even on like, you know, the trucks, you can see all these little kind of details mm. of the, the wear that's occurred on it and you've got the wood, etc. on there. And I just love like this, this texture just looks beautiful up close you know and it really works when you're painting on it to give it that lovely kind of realistic texture especially when you throw it into something like ar or something it looks lovely yeah oh we're gonna have to have a look at that yeah, we should definitely yeah definitely yeah. i'm gonna give a shout out to andrew proctor here for creating these amazing models for us um fantastic nice He's allowed australian me to graffiti artist. his yeah his lovely shoes graffiti the shoes with flames yeah, yeah. <laughs> hope he approves someone from the audience james would like to see a flattened view of the uv map sure so we can do that. Uh, we can jump into uh, Actions menu here and go to 3D. You can see it's got this new little 3D tab there. There's a few things that we've got in this, talking about AR and lighting, etc. but we can just show the 2D texture. 
And so you can see that it is uh, definitely painting back to a more conventional mm. uh, texture. But whilst you can edit that and you, you can totally use this as if this was your preferred method, there's nothing, nothing stopping you from that. But I think, uh, and it is very handy when working in that. Sometimes you need to jump back to 2D. Yeah. We spent a long time making it such that you should be able to stick in 3D for most things, but it's certainly available if you need it there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And another question from the audience, what poly count can it handle? Uh, good question. We've done a few tests of that. Claire, can you remember what the outcome was? Like, do we actually get a number? Because I was talking like X millions of polys or something. I'm not, yeah, mm. I think we've definitely had some up to 2 million, but mm. um, I don't think we've actually put a cap in there at this point Ooh. yet. Mm. Um, mm. That's what I mean. It's just such a new area for us. Like, I think when we go uh, to beta, mm. there's probably going to be a lot of things that we'll need to account for when people start, you know, when, it, when it's out in the wild, people are going to just start throwing crazy, yeah. you know, 10 billion models at <laughs> Procreate and we'll figure it out. See what happens. Yeah. So you just said that it was a, a new feature for us, James. Can mm. you tell us a bit about the development process for that and how the dev team handles, um, I mean, every release, but specifically new features and things that we may not have done before, like 3D? Mm. That's a good question. I think like we, we all, we, our, our software development approach is very different to, um, you know, the conventional kind of thing. We, we more, we approach software development more like um, uh, a music band, right? There's <laughs> no like Gantt charts, sales teams, uh, sh there's no big long strategy meetings about market share or whatever. Mm, the a, a, B, a, B testing. testing. <laughs> no, no. What we do is we get into a room, um, we act like donuts and we start jamming. We start with ideas and start <laughs> uh, prototypes soon after that. But the most important thing for us when we're developing is how does it feel? Mm. It's one of those weird ephemeral things that you can't really quantify on paper. A sales team can't really justify why, you know, a certain feature should exist. But the feeling that a product gives you, how it, you know, does it make you smile, does it get out of your way? Mm. Um, a lot of those things are, are very difficult, but we put a lot of our attention on making sure that everything feels nice, that, that you know, that intangible, that, that is too often overlooked, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that's, that's the best feedback that I feel that we get, is that it, they, it made creating fun again, it made it, it, it let, let their creativity just flow, yeah. and that is a real touchstone for how we come across um, come to the development process and like I think there's a lot of um, we like to look at creative problems that artists might have from from like the very core of it rather than have a look at what other people are doing to solve that problem say okay what is it that they're actually trying to achieve yeah. mm. and maybe consider looking at it from a completely different way that is is a way that really flows and is as simple as possible because complicated God, yeah. isn't necessarily better yeah, yeah totally yeah it's a, it's a it's an odd thing too because we, we we're kind of perfecting that process people someone wants to give it a name but I, we haven't got we haven't given it a name mm. it's just i don't know how you classify how, <laughs> how we do how we do that it's just intrinsically savage it, it kind it kind of is because i think when you're just focused in on what the cut and i think what claire was saying is really important the fact that like we don't just try and uh take what's off the shelf and just jam it into Procreate, really try and mm. analyze everything to make sure that it's it's um, going to work beautifully for multi-touch, for pencil, and really improve, mm. you know, the um, the creative tools for artists, you know. And also so that it feels um, like a natural addition to Procreate rather than something that's kind of tried to be jammed in. Yeah, in there. yeah good call. <laughs> so 3D is a great example in the layers panel, like trying to find a way that still felt as close to a comfortable place for artists who mm. are already using 2D. Um, but also give them the power that they need to yeah. create beautiful models. Yeah. yeah, this is right. This is right. And it takes time too. Like one of the things that we noticed very recently was um, for many years, we've just been pushing out update after update. And it's been a lot of fun. I mean, we've been going at breakneck speed. Mm. But, it, but I think sometime, I think it was the start of this year, we were kind of like, all right, let's, let's make sure that we're really focusing in on, on as much quality and as much user experience, as much stability as we can. Um, and that means, you know, 5.2 has taken the better part of a year, but that's how we used to work. Like, yeah. uh, previously to, uh, you know, around Procreate 4-ish, we'd really take time. You know, I remember we were developing the selection tool uh, that's kind of ubiquitous now, but we, we spent a long time with so many prototypes. That took almost a year, and then it didn't work, and it broke things, and 
It's a process. <laughs> it's just the way it works for software, you know? Yeah. But um, it's nice to see that kind of back at the moment where we're taking our time to really focus on making the best experience we can. Mm. You know? And mm. we often are... Um, build things three or four times in three or four different, completely different ways. Totally. Um, and that's not necessarily um, something that that a traditional software development company would do. They would have you know oh the God. time period and you built it and it solves the problem. But if it doesn't solve the problem to a co to a standard that we're happy with, we'll just start again. Or throw it out. Yeah. Or yeah. both. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes it makes people sad when we do that here, but. <laughs> I think it's kind of made it, made Procreate what it is. You know, when we have features that are really interesting and yeah, they, they kind of solve a problem, but if it doesn't solve the problem well enough, we just throw it away and start again. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. And Claire, as, as CEO, obviously you're working really closely with the dev team, um, helping them do all of their dev tasks and everything like that. How did the team approach and how did they feel about diving into 3D and um, making it savage I guess um, it's it's a big challenge mm. I mean especially <laughs> just, <laughs> just putting it like yeah. nicely yes we've all had to learn a lot about um, a whole different um, yeah. set of creative tools and what what sort of and a whole lot of uh, you know different um, the different import model uh, like formats and things mm. there's a lot to learn there especially because there's a lot of different ways that people are trying to solve yeah. the same problem so the learning curve has been large <laughs> but you know uh, as soon as you get to enjoy some of the stuff like the way that the lighting works and the um yeah that you, you, the the outcomes that you get from it are so satisfying that it gives people that little bump that we we live for yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah and it's been a while since we had that kind of release thing. I can't wait to actually finally release 5.2 because for me, 5.2 has just mm. been this thing that I almost feel like it's been out there in the wild because we've been living with it for so long. Mm. And there's of course other projects that we're working on that we can't talk about today, but that's kind of where our heads are at. And then when you look at 5.2, it's like, oh yeah, we haven't released this yet. We've, yeah. got, to <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, to, we've, got, to, we've got to do that. Um, and it's going to be nice, I think, when we finally do set it free and and get it out there, get yeah. that, that kind of response. Back. Absolutely, you start yeah. seeing some models in the wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super yeah. Fun. It's, or see how we can also improve it, you know, because yeah. this is only our, this is our first foray into uh, painting on 3D models. So um, as with everything we do, you know, we never just stop at one uh, iteration of that. Mm. This will definitely be going through the pipeline and we'll be working through that and learning and getting as much feedback as we can from, yeah. from our artists, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. We've got some more questions in from the audience. Um, first one being, does Procreate 5.2 have a way to generate UVs? That's a good question. <laughs> um, that's not yet, but it's definitely something that we would, you know, in order to have the best compatibility with it, the best range of models, it's the sort yeah. of thing that we yeah. need to look into. So Maybe yeah, for sure. Happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's on the table, but I'm, yeah. I'm not promising it for version one. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of the things too. We've really had to spend time making sure that uh, everything that goes into V1 is necessary. And there's been so much, because there's so much we can do mm. uh, in 3D. We had to rein ourselves in and be like, not yet. Let's get the core correct or as best we can. Yeah, yeah definitely. We've got another, another artist in the audience that says they're very new to 3D art. So how are we going to be able to find models for this? There's lots of ways you can find models. I mean, there's lots of uh, sites that you can get free models from. There's also sites you can pay if you need to, you know, do that for, for commercial reasons. Mm. There's also uh, some iPad products that do um, some sculpting, etc. So there's various amounts of software that you can use out there. Uh, there's also desktop software if you really want to, if you really want to get creative and you really want to um, take on 3D modeling, there's some desktop software like Cinema 4D, et cetera, you could probably jump into to generate those models. Yeah. But it's a different landscape. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. We've had a lot of artists talking online since uh, 5.2 kind of came into the scene, talking about how they've tried to dive into 3D modeling so that they could make their own to use in Procreate, awesome. and it's taking them like six months to learn. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's a big learning curve. <clears throat> well, it is, especially if you're going to desktop software because it's a... It's a very, as we said earlier, it's a very mature, mm. um, you know, uh, set of tools that have a very, um, they have some heritage into how yeah. they work. And so that's got to be learned, which is it's very, very difficult. And, and, you know, I used to model a lot, uh, but I don't really do, do much modeling anymore because uh, it's very difficult and I'm old. 
So, uh, <laughs> I just stay away from that now and just work with amazing people who make stuff like this and some of the other models. I'd love to see if we could, at some point we've got to show Steph's model. Um, mm. Oh, yeah, have we got that on this iPad? I don't. But, oh, um, I can airdrop it to you. Yeah. Oh, we do have it. Well, Claire, you should probably show it on the little mini. Like, oh, I man. love 5.2 on the mini, looks so sick. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can stream it up there, but... I don't know. I can maybe turn it around to you. show it to the <laughs> camera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can see on the small screen. While Claire's bringing that up, uh, James, can you draw in 3D without a base model? Uh, no. So. What we're doing here is we're literally painting directly to the model. So the canvas is essentially the texture. Mm -hmm. I think what, what the artist or what, what the customer's probably saying there is something like grease paint or something to that effect. Yep. Very, very interesting. Um, you'll probably hear us saying it a lot. It's very, very interesting, but right <laughs> now we're focusing on, on uh, just uh, painting on 3D models. But it, that is a very interesting point of view. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's air dropping in. Wait for it to come through. Oh, man. Which one is it? Which stuff is it? Which one are we on? We're going to release. Um, why don't we take a break from, from our lovely shoe here and take a look at this Ooh. lovely model from Steph. This is beautiful. Like he's taken time to really like look at all the little details in the in the texture of the model itself. And that's ready to, for I think he's going to be painting this soon. Yeah. Um, if I painted it, I'd just turn him into a bronze ornament because that's all I know how to do at the moment. <laughs> Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Give him a spin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Love that. <laughs> I love that gesture, though, because it's something, it's so playful when you're, you're kind of working away and just it just feels like it's uh, a bit more fluid and alive. You know what I mean? Mm. One of those small things. But yeah, I love this one. We're going to have to do something with it. Yeah. Absolutely incredible model. That one's by um, Stefan Bure. Everyone. Very cool. Yeah. Back in our... Oh, some... Where is our guy? There he is. There we go. Fleamage. That's very cute. Oh, a little comment from the audience there. I think, can we give you more money? Uh, <laughs> thank you. That's really lovely. <laughs> yeah, we don't need any more money, but thank you very, very, very much for your generosity. As we like to say online whenever this pops up, guys, it's, we really do appreciate how much you love what we're doing and how much you want to support us. The best way you can support us at this point is by leaving a nice review in the App Store for us. That would be fantastic. That's all we can ask for. Yeah, that's more than more than enough. Yeah, absolutely. So another question from the audience, James. New 3D features. Why not improved app stability? Well, should we talk about um, little that secret update? about 5.3? Yeah. Do you want to do you want to break the ice, Claire? Maybe yeah. give a bit of a sneak peek at what's happening. Um, well, we've been obviously been adding a lot of amazing, hard hitting features over mm. the last few years. Um, and what we're really keen to do next is to improve and to do exactly that. It's, we're going to have a release where we try not to add any new features. We're going to try. <laughs> try really being the hard. operative word. <laughs> um, but yeah, really just um, focus on improving just little bits of behaviour that could be better um, and obviously stability, bugs, um, visual consistency, just really polish it up. Battery life too. Mm. We've got battery life cool. on the on the horizon as well. It's one of those things that we we you know we have like kind of a, a very long roadmap at the moment. We're kind of at least three years out from all the releases we've got, and we're kind of scheduling those up. Um, and that particular release five three is going to be a lot of fun because mm. it's one of those things that there's so much we've been meaning to do, but we're jumping on to the next thing. And it kind of goes back to what we were saying before: um, the fact that we're just taking time to try and uh, really make uh, the best work we can. Um, and 5.3 is all about that. Just, mm. just looking through every detail of Procreate, trying to make it uh, better and more performant and hopefully more stable as well. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a bit of a, a giant sneak peek for you guys. Yeah. 5.3. <laughs> cats out of the, the bag. Next, <laughs> cats out of the bag, the next release. So, yeah, we have been doing a lot of really fun, big, cool features, but we do hear you. We know there are a few things that we can tidy up and we're going to do it. Yep. So look forward to that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we're on the other side of the graffiti flame now. Excellent. Yeah. Fantastic. Will there, this is a, a nice question, mm. will there be pre-made models in Procreate when it's released? Mm. Well, it's funny you should mention that. <laughs> Maybe you want to talk a little bit about the new pack. Yeah, so um, our wonderful marketing department have been putting together uh, a pack of models commissioned uh, specifically for 
Um, and so they'll be available for you to um, download straight into the app and get going straight away. So you won't have to do start off with that sort of search for models. Just, mm. just we want you straight into it. Straight in. Totally. Yeah. In fact, this this model I'm drawing uh, on right now, guys, this is one of the models in the pack. So you you two can make flamage on a on a shoe if you need to. <laughs> No, it'll be really cool, guys. So there's a, a handful of models that will be in the app. I can't wait to see what you draw on all of your models. We might have to do some sort of an art match around it. That's a good something idea. Something similar like yeah. that, yeah. But you really can opt fun. into the models, so if you don't want them, you don't have to have them. Yeah, excellent. So if you are a modeler and you have your own stuff, you can bring yep. your own stuff in instead. Totally. Cool. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? Oh, of course. <laughs> Any updates for Animation Assist? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> 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 there's, <laughs> there's onion skin colouring um, yes. as part of the accessibility yeah. feature update. Yeah. Yeah. So if red green doesn't work for you, you can pick your yep. own colours. Yep. Mm. Absolutely. That might be a good point to uh, start talking about accessibility then. What are we doing there? Art is for everyone. So what are we doing with our accessibility? In? Well, we've already talked a bit about colourblind folks. Mm. Um, James, would you like to jump mm. into uh, another artwork? So I don't we know can if show. I can now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing I'm having too much fun. No, no, I can do this. Uh, <laughs> let's jump into another artwork. Okay. So one of the examples is what we've done for um, colour naming. For those with colour blindness, they have the issue that um, they just want to be able to give a colour a name so that they can refer back to it. Mm. Um, so, as you can see there, um, we have another view now of palettes, which will automatically get give you a um, a name. Um, so, but also you can tap on any of those little palettes there and rename them to whatever you need. So, if you had um, brand colours or fan art colours or whatever you needed, you can mm. make sure that you know exactly what colour blue Sonic the Hedgehog is <laughs> um, for every time. Um, also, on top of that, um, you can, if you just want to pop back out into settings, mm. we've just added another extra little feature called, uh, for colour naming, notif for um, notifications for you. So if you want to use the eyedropper or something, that'll just give you a little live feedback there on what colour it is that you're picking. That's yeah, cool. it's hard to see, but when you're using it, guys, it's really nice. It's amazing how accurate it is. Like, sometimes you get some very lovely colour names like dark indigo, pink, red or something. <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. Like, what else is it? When you look at the colour, you're like, no, that seems fair, actually. <laughs> it explains it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, Somewhere. but it is all automatic. Uh, and as Claire said, you can rename it if you want, but it's, it's a really nice touch. Um, mm. But that's an example of the kind of thing of, you know, we wanted to solve, people just ask, can I name my colours? And this is sort of where we've taken that problem and just um, seen what the best job it is that we could possibly do with that problem. Mm. Um, but if you also just want to go to disc or something, you'll also get those um, notifications as you pan around. Oh yes, of um, course. Good call. The hue wheel there. So hopefully that. I don't know if it's coming through useful. guys, but yeah, that's a, that's a nice touch as well. Some names at the top there. Yeah. We're being told that people are really excited about seeing this in the chat currently. So awesome. that's oh, cool. That's, that's super cool. cool. Yeah. Glad you're excited guys. We're excited too about that one. Mm. And it, people just seem to be enjoying that really big, friendly um, mm. colour card um, yeah. look in, at the palettes. Inspired by Bunnings paint cards. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bunnings probably doesn't help our international no, people. Um, no. Like hardware, <laughs> hardware store. Oh, it's a hardware store, about, guys. Yeah. It's talked about Bunnings on Instagram. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, you know yeah. you get the little cards when you're doing your swatches for your yeah. house and stuff. That's where, that's where it kind of came from. Yeah. Bunnings is great because you can buy a sausage and bread on the weekend there, guys. Yeah. It's the Bunnings snag. And Georgie tells me there's a uh, there's now a Bunnings uh, Beat Saber track. There is. I need to there is. I need to download that. Yeah, and, absolutely. Okay. If you want that true Australian feel in your yeah, Beat Saber, guys, <laughs> you download, download the, Bunnings the Bunnings jingle. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> doesn't get more. Now accepting no, videos exactly. in the Instagram DMs of you guys playing the Bunnings jingle. Yeah. Send them through. Good call. Would love that. Good call. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm going to keep that running while I'm painting here, I think. What's that? The little colour names. Yeah. Because with is the 3D map, it does get a little confusing sometimes because you're reflecting, for instance, the environment here, which has got a lot of 
green and so mm. you're like what color am I on but yeah now that's I a good point actually it was just, yeah, it was just kind we'll of tell you what you're now. actually doing yeah because it might be because the lights can be colored it can yeah, be reflecting exactly. something completely different as mm. well yeah mm. good point yes now we're doing a lot of uh, painting in the, on the 3D models obviously um, what else works in 3D do we have other tools working at this point someone yeah. specifically wants to know if symmetry is going to work in 3D ah <laughs> Well, well, no. <laughs> we want it to work. We really want mm -hmm. it to work. But We're trying to do as many of the features as we can. Um, mm. Drawing guides is one of the ones that is not going to be in version one. Mm. Something mm. we're looking into, for sure. sure. But it's, yeah, really hard, right? <laughs> yeah, really difficult. Diff yeah, we have to make, like, having every single Procreate feature but in 3D is a big task. And we would like to release it. Yeah, we, we want to yeah. give this to you guys, so. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And I think there's a few other things that we had to um, remove from 3D just because, mm. yeah, the, the, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of technical reasons why. I think was the other one was liquefy. I think liquefy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. And it, yeah, it's one of those things we'd love to bring to 3D. Like, that's, that's the ambition, but mm. uh, yeah. Not for V1. Is the overall performance of Procreate affected by 3D at all? No. Nice. No. I mean, Claire, you could probably talk a little bit more about that, I suppose, well, when it comes um, to performance. Th unfortunately, like, I mean, the, f the frame rate that you'd be seeing on the stream is, isn't as um, mm. frequent as what mm. we can see here on, the, um, on a 120 yeah. hertz iPad. Um, but, no, we're trying very, very hard to make sure that there's no, that it feels just like you're painting on a flat canvas. We usually spend a lot of time each update making sure that uh, there's not a regression of performance. It's yeah. one of those really important things that every time we add stuff, because I think that there's definitely you know a consensus for, you know for, from every uh, customer out there. It doesn't matter what software you use that there's a consensus is generally speaking when you update it gets a little slower. Mm. That's something we actively fight against all the time, trying to make sure that if anything we're faster in a release. Doesn't yeah. matter what we add into the product it's mandatory that we're at 120 frames a second. And if something falls below that, and it happens all the time, right? Like mm. something will affect it. We, we jump on it and try and uh, make sure that it's a consistent experience. You and know? 2D should not be affected by 3D in any way. Yeah. Um, if, if you are to now go start a 2D artwork, you should ex it should be, in, apart from the new features in 5.2, yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome to hear. Yeah, it's a very deliberate thing we try and do uh, each release. Um, sometimes we miss the mark, but we get pretty close most of the time. Yeah, for sure. This is nice. It's soothing. It is so Nothing soothing. Nothing better to than watch. on a Saturday than to graffiti some <laughs> shoes. Graffiti or roller skate. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Someone in the audience would like to know that uh, model pack that we're going to be releasing with 5.2, how much will it cost? One million billion. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's how we make our money, guys. Yeah, that's why we don't <laughs> yeah. need donations. Mm. We just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's joking. It's free. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't do that to you guys. We would most. It's it's there so that so that everyone can kind of experience what we've experienced, which is you just pick it up and mm. and start playing. It's so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. We just want people to be able to dive into the product and start using it. So, you know, once you've purchased Procreate, that's it. Updates are free. Your model pack's going to be free. Yep. We all good. <laughs> I think we can. You can now download it from the app as well now, so you don't have to go out to a. Don't have to download it from a website or whatever. As soon as you update, there should be a little prompt there to to download it or not. Mm. Button. Yep. Nice. Easy. Good and easy. Yeah. Excellent. Will there be any new brushes? Yes, I just haven't made them yet. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, James actually creates all of our brushes in Procreate, so he is our master brush author. <sighs> I'll as well. I like that title. Yeah, good. you can add that yeah. to your list of titles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I go to the doctor, I can just... Yeah, you know. master brush author. Yeah. Hello. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun this time making brushes uh, for 3D because there's this whole new kind of thing of, of reflectivity, mm. uh, of glossiness, and of course how the textures affect that. So there's up to four textures when we're painting with uh, 3D if you want to have that kind of glossy metallic kind of yeah wow uh, yeah and so four textures all painting at once with all of the procreate you know brush settings and power it's, it's turned out pretty well yeah and yeah. some of the, yeah some of the other brushes will get a little bit of a shiny addition yep. probably yep mm. yep exactly or rough 
depending on what your preference is, you know. <laughs> oh, that's going to be super fun. Yeah. Someone com complimenting your socks, James. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I have a variety of socks. It, and usually they're just all as wacky as they, they all are. So I can, there's no choice in the morning. I just simply dip my hand into my sock drawer and I have a winner. <laughs> I'm not have sure to if we can do uh, brand shout outs here, but they want to know where you bought them. Uh, happy <laughs> so. Happysocks.com, guys. Ah. Yeah, happy Socks is where, <laughs> where to go. There you go. <laughs> I'm not paid by them or anything. No, not sponsored. No. Not sponsored by Happy Socks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Back to 3D, though. We yes, have another sorry, question around bad. the environments. Can you use HDRI environments? Uh, well, Yes and no. So we, we're going to provide you guys with a bunch of HDRIs that you can use out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of the first things I think our artists were like, can we upload yeah. our own? And that's something I suppose we're, we've had as well from the development team. Yeah. Um, something that we are looking into, yes. But at, for probably for the version one, we'll, we will just provide a, a range. And we've got a beautiful range of different sort of styles. for. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mark did, uh, our, one of our marketing guys, our film guy, went around Hobart taking some lovely, lovely, lovely HDRIs of like the mountain and the ports wow. and stuff. So that's all included there just, just to get started. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's really cool. It's nice yeah. to know that, you know, similar to the brushes that were released with Five with the Tasmanian names, that, yes. you know, some of the environments are also Hobart areas. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's inspired by our surroundings. Yeah. yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Thank you for not being subscription. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, I won't talk too long. I could talk all day about this. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to hijack five two with a subscription talk. But um, it's it's nice to know that uh, you guys feel the same as we do. You know, mm -hmm. we're we're really uh, trying to make the best tool we can and keep it f subscription free for as long as we possibly can. It's lovely to hear that kind of feedback. So thanks, guys. Yeah, that is really nice. Yeah. Ah, what devices will support three D? So we touched on this a little bit at the start of the stream. It is not going to be only the M1 iPads, guys. We're doing our best to make this available to as many people as possible. So don't stress about that one. <laughs> oh, can you paint models in VR? In that's, VR? That's a... Well, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no. Um, <laughs> It would be lovely to do that, but because we are focusing on the iPad um, and that experience of painting on a multi-touch surface, etc., mm. it's an interesting idea because we are playing in that 3D realm. Uh, but there's of course no hardware to support that from mm. from the Apple ecosystem anyway. Yeah. And right now, that's where we are kind of really focused on. But it's a very interesting idea. Yeah, definitely <laughs> an interesting idea, guys. <laughs> yeah. So we're nearly finished with the the flame. Yes. We're we doing the outline of it now. Yeah, yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm <laughs> just, just kind of just drawing. I'm just making things shiny, Georgie. That's all I know how to <laughs> that's, do. That's all we want in life. Yeah. Shiny things. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as we've got that kind of underway, guys, we might have a look at the lighting studio oh, and call. also some AR stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Might put, yeah. try and put the rollerblade on one of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> shiny rollerblades on a Saturday. <laughs> we had a. One of our dev team, Dave, standing in the rollerblade yesterday during testing. We made oh, it really big beautiful. in AR and had him standing in it. So that was great. Yeah. And a lot of fun that you can have with 5.2. <laughs> so the question that just popped up, can you change lighting? Yes, you can use the lighting studio. So totally. we're going to show you that in a second once James has finished yep. outlining his graffiti flames. Yeah, lighting studio is a really interesting one because you know when we first started out with 3D, we were kind of more bare bones in the beginning, just like... Let's just draw the textures, not worry about lights and, and uh, uh, you know, rendering, etc. We'll just focus in on that. But as time went on, we kind of kind of felt like we needed to bring those, mm. those things in. And Lighting Studio turned into something. It was kind of really nice now because you can almost paint with light, not with a pencil, but just by arranging that kind of um, studio set. We'll, we'll dive yeah. in in a sec and we can kind of jump through how that, how that might work. Mm. It's a lot of fun. Heaps of fun. Be great to show you that one, guys. Um, oh. Okay, no VR, but can we paint in AR? Um, <laughs> That's a, Claire? It might be a bit hard on the iPad. Like, <laughs> just what have you seen? Around it. <laughs> and then paint at the same time. What Seems if you, a bit tricky. Um, no. What if you had like an apparatus where you could strap it? Such yeah, that it was like, a, like a baby bouncer, but like out. Yeah. And it like straps out. Yeah, that might work. While you're walking but around. if there was oh. hardware again that was to support 
uh, hands-free AR or something. Who knows mm, in the future yeah. where, where, we, where we'll go with that. Mm. Nothing on the horizon yet, so we're just kind of focusing in on, on the iPad. But yeah, we do have AR features though, which mm. James Oh, shows yes. Them. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So enjoying seeing this metallic applied to the model. So yeah. much fun. It is, it is a lot of fun. The, and once you get used to the color change, I think that's probably the biggest thing because of the reflectivity uh, that I've assigned to some of these brushes when you are painting in these metallics, the colors will, will of course reflect, so it, it changed a little bit. But once you get used to that, it's, it's a lot of fun. Mm. All right, so we've kind of, kind of messed up this guy's model enough, I think, now that we can <laughs> jump, jump into the lighting studio or something. Why don't we try that and give it some dramatic lighting? Uh, so here, when you open up Actions, you've got the whole new 3D tab. This will only appear uh, when you've got a 3D model um, active. And so the way mm -hmm. that works too is you simply either drag and drop on Procreate or just import it, and then you're in that kind of 3D mode. Um, and so if I tap now uh, the Lighting Studio here, you can see I'm now in a, a little bit of a different view. Uh, you can do some really interesting stuff. So first of all, let's, let's work on the environment. So first of all, I can turn the environment off to get that more traditional kind of Procreate look. But let's not do that, it's way more fun to have it on. Uh, and there's a varying amount of different uh, environments here. And so we'll go through some of them like Studio, Savage, which is actually just our office here, the Auditorium, City. I love Auditorium, by the way. I, just, I think that's where I'm gonna go back and make some funky lights and that. Um, city, Nightlife, Portside, these are all beautifully um, handcrafted uh, HDRIs that we've taken time to, to uh, bundle in as a part of 5.2. Um, but let's go to something like Auditorium where it's nice and I just love how punchy that is. So now what I can do is I can move these little lights around and I can set stuff to them. So I can move them around as you would expect, um, which is really, really intuitive, really, really nice. Um, I'm going to make a mess of this and really jack up the intensity. So you can see here we can crank Whoa. up the intensity. I can also change the color though and mess with the saturation. So I might just put a slight amount of kind of pinky kind of purple on that maybe a bit less, but you can see straight away how it's changing the model. It's making a, a drastic effect on that model. Mm. Um, and if I throw some blue up here or something, you can see that's really starting to change the model. Um, and if I go to add a new one over here, really, really, really simple. I'm just gonna keep that one as white to make it a little bit more dramatic. Um, and then maybe, actually maybe just pop up this, yeah, make that dramatic, there we go. How many then, lights can we add? I actually don't know. Claire, do you, do you know how many lights we can make in this? I, don't, I think it's only four, but okay. just, maybe just keep pressing well, it. Yeah, just make <laughs> lights. see what happens. Let's make heaps of lights. Yeah, it's There four. we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. We were sensible. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun to, um, to use this to not, not only just like uh, help focus in on, on the artwork, but also enhance the overall artwork as mm. well, which is a lot of fun. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Can we reduce the environment blur to see more of the background? Um, that is something we're discussing. Yeah. 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 We're definitely discussing that. I'm just going to turn off like a billion lights here because, yeah, that's definitely something that has been discussed here and I think we're still considering that. Mm. While well, James is setting up the lights for this, guys, um, to the person in the comments who's asking about normal maps, we touched on this just a little bit before. So, you can have your normal maps in Procreate, but they're not editable. That's correct, isn't it? They're one of the ones that isn't editable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the supported formats at this point are USDZ and OBJ, but looking into more as we go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Starting off with the, you know, one of the OBJ has been around for a long time. Mm. So starting with that and the USDZ is readily acceptable on the on the um, iPad, you know, lots of USDZ models out there at the moment, so yeah. nice to support those. Yeah. Okay, so we've set up our lighting. Yes. What do you reckon? Should we go AR view? Um, I wanna, Are we ready for that yet? No, I want to make, oh. I think I want to paint on the wheels now, Georgie. <laughs> I'm sorry. I want it like a, although that's crazy. So, so what, what I was just doing there was, I was just painting, but the uh, metallic is, is just a little too high, so I'm going to duplicate that. Jump into materials, and this is my little preview here. You can see it's really reflective. So I'm just going to take that down. Same with roughness. That's on super glossy. So I'm just going to mm. turn that up a little bit so it's more matte. Um, 
just so I can paint on my, on my wheels here and they're not going to be like glass wheels or something. Um, I feel like it needs to be black wheels, you know, just to really enhance that. Um, yeah, sorry, George, I derailed whatever you were saying before though. <laughs> That's totally fine. We're just going to take a little break and paint in the wheels oh, wait, before we go AR. Oh, wait, you want to do AR. the AR thing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, but I'll be ages. All right, oh. I'll, I'll edit, I'll stop this. But I, I think it would look pretty good with black wheels, just putting it out <laughs> I there. think you're right. Um, all right, let's go do some AR views. So here we have our little guy here. Uh, if I go back into the 3D stuff, I can now view in AR. I'm going to do some, um, some weird stuff here, guys. I'm just going to start pointing at the floor. Hopefully we can pick this up. But if I go view in AR, it will start, hopefully, preparing the model and we'll project it here to Ooh, the floor. All right. Hopefully it'll work. See some of our behind the scenes set. Here yeah, so that's right. Here we go. There's a little tiny shoe. I'll make it bigger uh, and then rotate it around. Now we have a shoe. Here, George, do you want to wear the shoe? I've got to try and. Yeah, look at this. It's, sure. It's going to look, it's gonna look sweet. Put the, put the shoe on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, it's really interesting though, I think Apple's AR view is really, really good. It takes into consideration the lighting around us and, and factors that in into the render and it's beautifully stable, the tracking is lovely uh, and there's not much that you have to do. Once you've painted on your model, it's really nice to kind of throw it into the real world and it, uh, it, it kind of does all the bits and pieces for you. So you just need to p just point at a surface and, and you'll get that model. Mm. It's a lot of fun. I mean, <laughs> we have like a mech from uh, from one of our commission artists. Mm. Uh, and it's another Steph one. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We projected it up like the size of like a two-story building. It looks <laughs> it looks so yes. good. Yeah, it looks so good. I think we've also got a, a photo somewhere in the archives of um, our head of finance standing next to a model that Will's done and giving him a little kiss. <laughs> oh, cheek. Will's model. Let's, yeah. let's show oh. Will's model. All right. So you guys, our, oh, our in-house um, artist, Will. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have this on this model? Because I want to airdrop it to him. I could have sworn oh, I had it. Do we have Will's on here? I thought it was there yesterday. I know, yeah. It's so good. Will spent so much time um, in this particular model. Absolutely incredible. Uh, it's like single hair really details. Really great to show. Yeah, it's really, really, really good. Sad. Really, really good model. Um, oh. oh, Claire's got. Someone's oh. got it. Hey. Oh. Is that it? Wow. There we go. Someone's taking over and driving it. <laughs> you know what you should do though is re show the eyes. Will spent a lot of time using reflectivity and like gloss to go and have a look at the eyes. I don't think we can see this on the stream. Uh. Is that? Someone's, I think it's Nate driving it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Will spends so much time sculpting this and painting this now. It's one of, it's one of those really good examples of a high poly count model mm. that um, imports, works beautifully in Procreate. Are you going to send it my way? Cool. So hopefully this will load. And guys, if we do experience a crash or whatever, this is why we're still in um, testing mode. So please excuse us if that happens. We'll have mm. to see. <laughs> uh, if that works. Pre-release software. No. Yes. It's always yeah. the way. No. There we go. Coming across. Yeah. I don't know how long it took Will, but it was a, it was a short like amount of been, time, but a long amount of time. I feel like he's been working on it. Like every time I go into the Markle Mary, he's just there sculpting. Yeah. He's been working on it for away. ages. Yeah. It's amazing. Might take a little while to pop in. Yeah, That's it might fine. do. It's a big, oh, here we go. It's a big one. Here we go. We'll see how we go. And this was all painted in Procreate too, so it came, yeah. I think, it came from ZBrush, uh, I think, and then uh, came in. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, here we go. Look at this guy. It's just an insane amount of detail. I love his beard, like all the hairs oh, in the same. beard. <laughs> look at that. It's amazing. It's just an extraordinary job, and it's beautifully high res texture. I think it's all 4K uh, in texture, so you can kind of see all the lovely little details that Will's painted in for these textures, like mm. the leather. Such a beautiful, beautiful model. And I love the eyes, like when you get the, this little glossy, you can see Mount Wellington in the background there of his eyes, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, and oh yeah, hang on. Oh no. Yeah, I'm sorry, this okay. has to be done. <laughs> so if you go, you can go inside oh, the model. No. Look at this guy. Oh, no. Bonjour. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
nightmare stream. Uh, <laughs> look, look, I can even travel down. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> into the great beard. <laughs> oh, even better from the space Oh, there's his teeth. Oh, no. It's beautiful. Oh, no. Just, it's, it's just like, you know, when a good carpenter makes something, even on the inside, is beautiful. Will's model, even on the inside, was beautiful. You know? I love it. I love it. And all these little details through here. Yeah. That's spectacular. Great job, Will. Yeah. Excellent beautiful, work. Beautiful, beautiful job. Back oh, to my, back back to, to my back lame to roll skates. <laughs> Your flame skates. Yeah, my Back flame to the skates. flame skates. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. So now that we have the M1 chip in the iPad, what are we thinking about the uh, MacBook? Ah, yes, that old chestnut. That old chestnut. It's missing a vital bit of hardware. Mm. Which is, mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Look, that has been, uh, we've, we've said before, right, we actually did spend time developing Procreate for Mac and took a long time. Uh, in fact, I think it was Claire was taking the lead on that a few years ago. But this is, the, this is the, one of the most mm. important ingredients in that experience of Procreate that we've all become accustomed to at kind of second nature. And when you remove that, um, it's not the same when you have a third party stylus that has driver issues and all the, all the stuff that comes with the... The, the heritage of a desktop platform, yeah. you know? And this, this really for us is the, um, the best experience possible. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely. And someone in the comments wants to know, um, why are we stuck in the Apple ecosystem? Are we owned by Apple? <laughs> no, we're not owned <laughs> by Apple. We're stuck, uh, we're stuck there uh, at a deliberate choice, mainly because the experience that we want to give to artists, we want it to be literally the, the best that we can possibly make. And Apple are making the best hardware right now. Mm. The Apple Pencil is probably the best stylus, the M1 chip, the screens in these devices. I mean, the screens in these things are amazing. So for us, uh, keeping ourselves acutely t uh, focused in on, on that hardware means we can generate a better user experience than mm. we could on any other platform, which aligns with kind of how we want to roll. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Yeah. Cool. I hope that answers the question for you guys. <laughs> Jumping back to our 3D, someone would like to know, can we custom, uh, do custom or imported environments at this point? We did touch on the HDRI ones earlier, but just to reiterate for everyone? Um, probably not for version one, but it's something that we're talking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Excellent. And jumping back to also features that can be used in 3D, what mm. about color drop? Yes. I think that works. Let's try it live. I don't know if it's oh. going to work. Um, we'll go back to my shoe. Try this guy. We'll just do a little circle here and make sure it's all shut off. Does this work? Oh, God. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> you could have even done that as a quick shape. Oh, really? That works now, oh, too, doesn't shape. it? Yeah, let's try that. I'll nice. make a little triangle or something. Does it work? Yeah, yep, look at yep. that. Mm. Gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, especially as much as possible, The well, Getting the best painting experience for 3D has really been the focus for this mm. first version of 3D. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you can definitely colour drop and you can colour drop straight um, just onto the materials. Like if you wanted to just bump up all of your metallics in one go. Yeah, I, cool. I mm -hmm. think all the, the, the effects and stuff should work too, yeah? Yep. So we should be able to jump in here and uh, do some interesting stuff, like maybe just a hue, saturation, brightness or something. Yeah, mm. check it out. Wow. Yeah, that is nice. cool. Adjust stuff after the you fact. Could gradient yeah. map it and have all kinds of different oh scale gosh, types. Yeah. Or what about like a glitch or something? <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if I'm enhancing it right now, but, but hey, it works! <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Well, while, we, while we play with some of these things, guys, please uh, chuck any more questions in the comments. We might open up to a few more questions now um, before we look to. Wrapping up in a mm, little bit. Sure. It'd be good, yeah. Check oh, yeah, this, let's this, show some this of these other artwork, models. Yeah. What mm. I love, this, this, um, this artist added just a tiny bit of like gold reflectivity to a brush. And so I don't know if you guys can see that, but as you're moving around, some of these things like the details, the line art here, these are all kind of like a gold foil. And again, you really need to see this on the device because we're streaming here and it's streaming at 30, of course, but on the device it's all 120. It's a very, very different experience, and you can really see all those little gold mm. reflectivity parts to it. It's a beautiful, beautiful artwork. Um, there's, there's some other ones that are coming through at the moment that 
you guys will see shortly some you know we gave uh, the build to a very small uh, group of artists to help kind of test and produce the artwork and they came back with just some amazing results on these 3d models mm. that it's one, one of my favorite is, yeah yeah it's <laughs> yeah. it's stunning though it's just beautiful all the little details in there uh, someone who's asked, can we use effects and filters in 3D? Yes, we just touched yep. on that then. Um, so all of your effects and filters should work on your 3D models so you can glitch them out to your heart's content. <laughs> yep. I think they all work apart from Clone, I think is the one that we've... Oh, yeah. Um, we've and Liquify. And Liquify. And liquify. Yep. Clone is still on, on, on the cards. On the, cards. Yeah. Oh, on the sure fence, we on the would fence. say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> ah... When is this releasing? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> right at the end. Uh, I don't know if we we can say when it's going to be released just yet. Um, we are working really, really hard on it. We would ho we would hoped we had released it uh, a little bit sooner than we have, guys. But we've just been so focused on mm. uh, learning about three D. To be honest, there's just so much in three D that we have to account for. So. We kind of want to make sure that we're only going to ship it when we feel it's it's working um, beautifully, and it will be hopefully this year. Um, you know, the office is kind of um, buzzing with five two stuff at the moment, mm. so um, shouldn't shouldn't be too much longer. Mm. Hopefully this year. Mm. Oh, are there any new two D features <clears throat> that we can show? Well, the the two um, D uh, the accessibility features um, are quite broad, and a lot of yeah. them ended up introducing features that we wanted to build anyway um, forward into 5.2 because mm. we found that they were either going to help people with um, issues with cognitive load or issues with um, motion or vision. So um, I think there'll be a, quite a few highly requested things in there that ha happen to tick both boxes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's the accessibility stuff that Claire's talked about. There's stuff like motion filtering that... Um, the guys have been really, really hard at work. It's this is a it's a interesting one to demo um, because it is um, it's very very interesting the way it works. So, for instance, if I go here into one of the brushes, you can see we've got this new stabilization tab, and you can see down the bottom is motion filtering. And this is this is kind of uh, born from the idea that those who are suffering motor difficulties while drawing, how do we help those people uh, draw a, a nice stable line? It's very difficult to show, guys, because what I'm about to do is draw on the drawing pad here, and I'm going to deliberately uh, be quite aggressive with my expressions. But you'll be able to see that um, the filtering itself, what's happening is, you can see here, that's what I actually drew, but we're filtering all that out so that people who are experiencing those difficulties actually are able to draw reasonably uh, good line weights. In fact, we had someone here recently, I think it was Ross, yeah. I think was here, yeah. yeah. And he was saying, normally I have to do all the line art, etc., through um, a vector app, probably mm. like a pen tool or whatever. And he was like, this is the first time I, I, I think I can see myself actually drawing digitally. Mm. So that was a really encouraging kind of step. Yeah. And, and it's a nice, it's a really uh, nice thing that fits in with our theme of art is for, for, for everyone. Mm. It was yeah. really exciting to see him use the the test software and yeah. to experiment with that it was yeah. so cool. And the interesting thing is, even if you, um, you know, if you're able-bodied and you want to um, uh, kind of experiment with with motion filtering, you can get some really interesting results. Mm. Um, very different to a new feature that we could probably announce today that everyone's been looking forward to, uh, which is stroke stabilization. So that's one of the big things for 2D. We haven't forgotten about 2D, even though a lot of work has been going into 3D. Of course, you know, the vast majority of people will, will paint and draw in, in, uh, in 2D, and mm -hmm. that's been one of the most requested things. So whilst we were doing the work for accessibility and motion filtering, we also kind of stepped into stabilization, uh, and that's going to be really, really nice for, yeah. for people to kind of experience it. One of those really hot features that people have wanted for a long time, mm. and uh, yeah, it's coming in 5.2. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Someone would like to know what the audio feature that is listed on the website is the audio feedback. Oh yeah. yeah so that's one of the things that um, I love this introduced <laughs> for, for artists with low vision. Um, it, um, I'm not sure whether that'll come across in the in the stream, but um, it it means that you get kind of a little bit of sound feedback on the on the buttons, um, so you know that you hit them, um, and also on sliders, so that you get a, a sort of a lower tone at the, at the low end and a higher tone at the high end to give you some 
um, some feedback. So don't you don't, to, I don't even know if, you if it's going to work. Have you got the, yeah. Yeah, it says it's on, but I don't know if you can hear us, guys, but it's this beautiful kind of synthesizer sound that Claire's made that really helped convey uh, a variable increasing or decreasing. One of those really nice touches, too, I think, that, you know, we're not going to be headlining with these kind of features, but mm. it's nice that when people do jump in there and if they turn those sounds on, they get another level of, of experience in there. Yeah, there's a heap of fun little sounds all through the app when you turn that on, guys, so... Um, I mean, if someone wanted to make a soundtrack for it, <laughs> send it through. I'm, I'm not going to be upset about that. Yeah. Could be an office favourite. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> the sound of release. Yeah. Uh, voiceover compatibility. Do we, do we have that? We've in worked there as well? very hard on that. Yeah. Um, so as much as, as we've been able to, there's some issues with gestures um, sort of conflicting. Mm. Um, but we but we've tried our tried our best to do that. For yeah, people. nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. one of those things that we really wanted to support straight up. But mm. um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions, guys? Well, we've got James and Claire here to answer anything that you might throw at us. Oh, brush organization. Oh, anything look, there? Yeah, I I'm with you, straight <laughs> up. Like. When, whenever we're making uh, new brush packs or whatever, my sets just end up in this just catastrophic state of like test one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera, oh, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so we are actively working on that. It's a big redesign and it's, it is planned. Uh, we just haven't got the right design down just yet to really help manage that. Um, that what we really want to have is just, you know, essentially an infinite load of brushes that you can just mm. mess with and have a very neat and simple organization method. I'm still got to figure that one out. Mm. Yeah. Mm, that'll be great. Ooh, mm. that's, this is actually a question that's been blowing up Procreate social media channels since the 3D was teased back in April. Mm. Animated 3D models. How do we feel about this? Um, yeah. <laughs> feel good about <laughs> it. I love it. Love yeah, that. I feel great. We've already done some <laughs> tests with USDZs that contain animations yeah. um, that should survive the round trip. So if you import one, a USDZ with animations in it, paint on it and re-export it, it should animate. We've definitely um, done some demos yeah, where that's cool. been yeah. fine. But um, yeah, complete compatibility across all models will be yet to be seen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We'll be actively looking at that too yeah. once we really start deep, diving deep into the QA side yeah. of stuff. Well, that's cool to hear though, but yeah, compatibility will, uh, well, I mean the, yeah, you'll be able to export it and animate it while it's been painted. That's. That's really in fact, cool. I think if I go back to, we've got the little exporty stuff too that we could probably show. Oh yeah, um, I think that's an old version, but you can it? maybe tease it oh, if you like. Oh, why not? <laughs> Let's do this. So when you export, yeah, it is an old version. <laughs> when you yeah. export it though, you will get settings where you can uh, play with uh, how you export it. Because it's, it's nice to draw and take all this time making this three-dimensional uh, painting, but when you want to share it, uh, we, we're kind of generating this little MP4 where you can have a few var um, variables that you can play with. The most recent build has a little bit more variables there, but it's a nice thing you can export then, you know, 724 or even a, a 4K. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty big. <laughs> but if you want to showcase the work that you've been putting into, you know, that's, that's that options there as well, which is kind of mm. cool. Very, very cool. Oh, uh, another question about textures here. What's the max texture resolution that we can do in 5.2? Uh, that won't have changed for 5.2 as yet. I think it's, yeah, it's still going to be bound by all the, the, the usual yep. uh, memory uh, limitations that we, we have with the hardware. But mm. um, who knows where that's going to go in the future. Yeah, for sure. Mm. We'll find out. Mm. But one more here is, uh, sorry, referencing. Ah, right, yes, with the reference window. So can we reference the 3D model while painting flat on a 2D texture? Yes. Nice. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Are you turning stuff in? I'm just making sculpture. a big bronze sculpture. Bronze sculpture. I love it. That's all I, <laughs> that's all I know how to do nowadays. I mean, Fantastic. It's, it's just, you know, everything looks so good when it's bronze. It really looks like something out of Alien now. It does. But if I change that environment, I can make it even more cray cray. Look at that. Wow. That looks sick. <laughs> Cute. 
I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there are sounds yeah. that are emitting. Yeah, you can hear the little bidding, bidding, bidding. Bidding, yeah. bidding, bidding. Not sure if that gets picked up by your mic or not. Don't know. Look at their oh shiny my ears. <laughs> so shiny. So shiny. It's a beautiful boy. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Ah, someone asking if we're going to add sound to animation assist. This is a very common question as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get that a lot. So animation is just so interesting to us right now. Um, and we would love to um, bring everything that you guys want to Animation Assist, like audio and multiple tracks and that kind of stuff, but um, we, we can't talk about improvements we're making to Animation Assist just yet, just because we're still kind of working through, again, what that looks like and how mm -hmm. it's going to work. But uh, one day soon, we'll be able to talk a little bit more about Animation Assist and how that works yeah. in the future. Yeah. But for anyone asking if it's, you know, if that sort of thing might be happening in this re release specifically, no. 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 No sound in animation for this release. Oh, a seamless pattern tool. Is that coming? That's uh, also a very common question. Yeah, we want to do that one. Mm. I just don't know. Uh, it's, yeah, I don't know if we're ready to announce when that's happening or whatever just yet either. Yeah. <laughs> because a lot of the, because again, a lot of the way that we work, right, it's not, um, we don't have that kind of cadence and schedule that we must hit this release by this yeah. thing. We, we kind of, uh, as we mentioned earlier on in the stream, we kind of take our time to really evaluate, you know, is this feature ready to ship? Do we need to hold it back? Do we need to keep improving it, et cetera? Mm. So we don't really, we have goals that we kind of set. And like we mentioned, we have like at least three years at the moment where we've got some really big milestones coming. Mm. Um, but we, we just don't announce stuff until it's, we know when it's going to be ready to ship. Because it's always nicer just to say, uh, and it's ready to go, you know, essentially. It's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's really important to us that we give you a good experience on, you know, the software release as well, guys. So if we were to say, you know, it's, it's definitely being released at this point, it puts a lot of pressure on us and we wouldn't want to disappoint you if we then couldn't make that release date, yeah. you know. So um, just trust us. We're doing the best we can as fast as we can and we will give you something that we think is really cool when we're ready. When we get there. When we get there. Yeah. Oh, I any, sorry, just no. jumping in there. Um, any new gesture supports? For accessibility, definitely. Mm. Um, we really would, one of the things that we were looking at was um, allowing for people who may only be able to, um, may not be able to do the, the multiple um, touch gestures. Um, so there's there's some features in there that yeah that will definitely be focusing on that specifically. Mm. Yeah, awesome. There's a lot of other little things about our accessibility that um, you know they're, again they're not headline features, but it's just going to be nice when people dive in. Mm. Like you know one of the things is the the brush sliders. There's some work we've done there, so that you can remember the brush size that you've got. But again, these things that are, there's lots of little details that we sprinkled out through 5.2 just to try and help make life easier for everyone. Yeah. Know. Yeah. And that's, that's what's been great. It's just mo almost all of the accessibility features have just made the app easier for everybody, which is yeah. That's, that was, that was really the goal. Nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 Art is for everyone. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Fantastic. All right. We might take a couple more questions, guys, before we, we wind up today. Um, so there's a lot of questions around features that people are wanting. Sure. Um, before we dive into asking about those features, I do just want to remind everyone that we do actually have a board where we take feature requests. So if you want to dive over to procreate.art forward slash discussions, you'll find the ideas and suggestions board where you can let us know what features you want. Um, we use that board a lot. We go in there and we check what's really popular, what people are asking for, and we may consider them for a future update. So it's really important that you let us know there if you have a specific feature that you really want for Procreate. Um, that being said, could we, in the future, save files to iCloud or to oh a cloud service God, in I general? Want this. I want this so bad. But <clears throat> the reason why we haven't brought that out just yet is that you know, back uh, when we released Procreate version 1, uh, we introduced our own proprietary file format. And that was way ahead of its time back mm. then. Um, and we needed to do that to encapsulate, you know, the, uh, the video files that we were outputting for time lapse, etc. So we kind of forced to, to develop this. But it, by nature, it was never meant to be transmissible yeah. um, uh, online. 
Uh, and then, you know, over the years, we've added stuff to it and added stuff to it. And so I think at about 2016, when we decided, all right, let's now look at bringing this into the cloud. Yeah, it's not a trivial, <laughs> it's not a trivial thing. Um, and so we, I, I can't wait for us to, to, to make those announcements in the future about what we've been working on. Um, but it is most certainly something that we are actively looking at. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another question on features. Can we have unlimited frames for animation assist? It's kind of all tied to the same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you did hold frame for a, really, for a really long time. It's a really slow moving <laughs> yeah. animation. But I reckon you could do something in an art gallery where just, you know, that's all yeah. it is, is just you know, one frame an hour or something. <laughs> I'm sure it'd attract a crowd. That's, um, a, that's a hack, really. Yeah. That's a way to get around um, it. <laughs> but more, more again, more layers, more frames. Yeah, we're, we're looking into it. Yeah. We're actively working on that. For sure. Yeah. Oh, apparently there's a lot of people in the chat, James, asking you to make pixel brushes as Procreate's brush author. Oh, sure. If you guys want, we can make some pixel brushes. Yeah, <laughs> why not? I used to, I used to love, uh, you know, I first started out messing around with uh, graphics when I was a very young lad in high school. They had this, like, mini Mac lab in the... Uh, library and so I remember you know most lunches I'd, I'd want to be going into into the the library and I used Mac paint and back then you you know you had the mouse and the pixel grid and you would just paint via pixels and you would learn how to dither and all that kind of stuff and it was so much fun back mm. then you know and then I'd print them out and then people would go but you drew that on a computer it's not real I'm like no but I, I literally drew every pic the, whatever man you drew it on a computer um, and I think that Pixel art has got such a beautiful style to it. I'd, I'd be, it'd be fun to jump in there and have a go at that. So, short, that was a very long way of saying, sure. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to get lots of people on yeah. social media being like, where are those brushes, James? Hey, James. Hey, James. Have you done That's the brushes? That's fine. That's I all like good. It. We'll chase him up for you. Yeah. No promises when, but he said yes. So, there you go. <laughs> Ah, another, another really common question from the peeps online. When is online collaboration coming to Procreate? Or is it coming to Procreate? Um, you know, I think, I think it's one of those things that Procreate is defined by what it does have and also what it doesn't have. There's mm. certain things that I think we, we believe strongly in that um, we'll put forward into the product or not. And I think collaboration is one of those things that um, is something that you know, as as future goes on, there's more and more to tools that do include collaboration tools. But I'm not sure personally if it makes sense right now to have collaboration tools in Procreate. I think, mm. you know, most of the time, a lot of us are spending hours and hours and it's a very private, intimate kind of experience. There is the other side of the commercial experience where, you know, dr people want draw overs and stuff. And, and, and there you could see sort of an application of how that might work. Mm. But again, how we approach it is a little bit different. We wouldn't just take it off the shelf uh, and do something simple like like what the other guys have probably done, but we are definitely interested in how that might work in appropriate kind of experience. Mm. Mm. Yeah, cool. Ah, now this is a big question. This is a big job. Will Procreate Pocket get this update? <laughs> um, they will get <laughs> an update. <laughs> <laughs> They'll definitely be a binary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, without without <laughs> Apple Pencil, the three D experience yeah. is not yeah. um, is going to be not not what we'd like um, mm. because to be able to really interact with that model as well as to be able to paint, um, but we have yet to really dive into that and see. Um, some of the new phones are very powerful. Yeah. So I, I don't think that's really the thing that would hold it back. It's more more the lack Apple of pencil. pencil. Mm. Yeah. In fact, yeah. some of the you're right. Some of the, the more recent phones, the the chips that are in there are insane. Mm. There'd certainly be no problem porting it over, but. Mm. Yeah, without Apple Pencil. Yeah, Don't that's know. right. But the accessibility features, yes. Yeah. 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 That'll be super cool. Mm. It'll be really nice. I have my phone just kind of make the sounds. <laughs> 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 yeah, we well, can just do a yeah. sound update for you, Georgie. Excellent. You know, but you know what we'll a do. Georgie is, personalized update. Yeah, but what we'll do is all the development team, we've been wanting to do this. We, oh, all yeah. we want to do <laughs> is just add our own sound effects mm. as little WAV files. Uh, I reckon it'd be wicked. Um, <laughs> so, stabilizer, I could just see one of the questions, stabilizer to be added to all brushes at once. So the answer is both. Mm. <laughs> uh, 
a little, little, little mind-bending, but if we jump into just a blank document here. Um, so you can see, first of all, that when you go into the brush settings, we've got the brush studio here, stabilization. So this will, this will of course, add more or less stabilization to your brush, but we can also go over here into preferences, uh, into pressure and smoothing, and you can see there's a global stabilization as well. Uh, and also motion filtering as well, so that, again, for, for those who have some difficulties with uh, motor control, we got you from an app level, you can the, you know, put a uh, motion filtering across the entire uh, suite of brushes or stabilization, whatever your preference is. And it's a very interesting kind of thing. You can kind of uh, put a little bit of global on so that everything feels a little bit neater, but then you can dive into some brushes if you really want specific inking brushes, etc., and then really start ramping up the stabilization or, mm. or filtering. Yeah, and how will those work together? Brush, individual brush versus global. Yeah, it's it, it's, it's pretty much seamless. Yeah. So you don't really have to think about it. You can just jump in there and just start messing with the settings until it feels good. It's another yeah. one of those ephemeral things that you just kind of got to experience and experiment until you get something that feels right for mm. you. And you if know? you want to get yeah. specific, it'll pick the maximum. Yeah, like, cool. So that yeah. so you can have that experience mm. that if you've yeah. got you only need a little bit for all brushes, but you want a, like a really um, slick inking brush, it'll take that. Exactly. Yeah, nice. That brush will yeah. override. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. All right. We are going to take one last question before we wrap up. And this is another question that gets asked a lot. Um, will Procreate add vector tools? Another one we get a lot of. <laughs> yes. Um, no. <laughs> you know why I'm yeah. pausing though? Mm. Uh, there is so much we're working on and I'm just bursting to, you know, we're not ready to say these things so we can't talk about it. But Vector is also very interesting to, mm. to us. So, yeah. yeah, totally. I think, I think that's the answer. Vector is interesting, yes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we might wrap it up there, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I have one last very exciting thing that I'd like to tell everyone, and that is that we will be going to beta with this. Mm. So keep an eye on our social media, keep an eye on our website. Procreate 5.2 will be coming to beta and you will be able to register your interest in trying it out for yourself. We can't wait to hear your feedback on it. It's going to be super fun. Um, so thank you very much to James and to Claire for joining us in the Procreate Lounge today. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Don't forget to watch. Tomorrow we have uh, Sammy Harlem. He's going to be doing a 3D drawing uh, demonstration for you on our YouTube channel again and the day after we have Aaron Blaze who's going to be doing an animation demo in Procreate. So those two are definitely ones to watch. We'll see you then. Bye.